Hi, the purpose of this recording is to give you some songs to help you remember the principal Greek endings for verbs. I did not come up with these particular songs. I inherited them when I was a teaching fellow at Asbury Seminary from a teaching fellow who'd gone before by the name of Rory Skelly. I believe he was the one that, that came up with these songs. I don't know whether he got them from somewhere else, uh, but I won't take credit for them. But um, there are some endings that tend to appear on Greek verbs. And as usual, languages are messy. So don't get upset if you find exceptions. There are almost always going to be exceptions. And if you, if you can't, this is a matter of personal growth. You can go beat your head into the wall until you have to go to the hospital, or you can learn that there's almost always going to be exceptions. The purpose of these songs is to give you something that's going to help you most of the time, or a lot of the time, not something that's going to give you all the answers. So without further ado, let's talk about these uh, endings and the songs. So the purist is going to say, those aren't all endings. Ken, look, you've got an Omicron on Amen there. How could you do that? That's not an ending. That's a connecting vowel. Deal with it. This is to help people remember endings. The same thing with the epsilon on the eta. It's not part of the ending. It's a connecting vowel. I know it's a connecting vowel. Um, and similarly, I know the purist, the purist puts these, at, like Spongebob, when he goes into Sandy's air thing, he thinks he can handle the, the air without the water, and he goes all... There are some grammarians who want you to mem memorize these desiccated endings that never appear in actual form anywhere. Um, and so we can, we can hypothesize the theoretical ending, and that's all fine and good, but these songs are going to help you remember what you're actually going to see. This is going to get you most of the way. Deal with the fact that it's not theoretically pure. So, this is the first set of endings, the primary active endings. Primary means they go on non-past tenses. So they're going to go on things like the present tense, they're go going to go on the future tense, uh, and, and so forth. Now, uh, I, okay, fine. Ten tense is not about time. I know, I know, I know. Fine. These are the endings that go on the present tense and the future tense when it's active. And now the song. O ace a amanetta usi. O ace a amanetta usi. Yes, I know the omicron probably was more a long, short sound, but this is going to help you. Let's go on to the next one. So the second set of endings here are the secondary active endings. Secondary means that they go on past tenses, like the imperfect, especially these were made with a view to the imperfect. And yes, they basically go on the aorist. And yes, I know um, it may or may not have to do with, tense doesn't have to do with time maybe, um, but deal with it. These go on the imperfect tense, and these go on the aorist tense. And so, and they're active. Without f further ado, an esse, amen, eta, an, orison. An esse, amen, eta, an, orison. An esse, amen, eta, an esse, amen, eta, an esse, amen, eta, an, orison. Yes, again, omicrons are connecting vowels, eta, the epsilon is a connecting vowel. Yes, I know. Um, the a son, by the way, in the third person plural, has to do with the aorist passive endings. Yes, I know I said they were secondary active. Why do they go on the aorist passive? I don't know. Deal with it. Um, the epsilon, an epsilon with a nu, a nu with an epsilon in front of it, is very often a movable nu and often a third person singular. That third person singular, eh, ending, is something that you might want to memorize because you're going to see it a lot. Third person rules the day in terms of frequency. And, of course, if you have a, a third person in the past tense, then you're going to probably have an eh there if it's active. Our third set of endings are uh, non-past tenses, like the present and future, um, when they are either middle or passive. Yes, I know the omicron's a connecting vowel, and the epsilon's are connecting vowels. Yes, yes, I know that the second one um, uh, is more originally psi, sigma alpha yoda, the second person singular was originally psi, yes, I know. But this is the way it's going to look um, in the, the present uh, middle or passive, or the way it's going to look in the future middle. So for non-past tenses, um, when they are middle and sometimes passive, these are the way they will often look. Lua mai, lue lue tai, lua mai, 
Lue luetai, lua metha, lueste, luan tai, yai, 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 lua mai, lue luetai, lua mai, lue luetai, lua metha, lueste, luan tai, yai, 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 yai. And finally, my brethren and sistren, if you're dealing with a past tense that's either middle or passive, uh, a lot of times the past tense will separate those. So, for example, the aorist passive and the future passive use a theta, eta um, to, to kind of, and, and the endings go awry. Um, but for like the imperfect uh, middle or the imperfect passive, these are the endings you're going to find. Yes, the omicrons are mostly connecting vowels here. Yes, the epsilons are connecting vowels here. Yes, the original primordial ending for the second person singular was so, sigma, omicron, fine. But these will get you just fine uh, through the imperfect, middle, and passive. Amenu eta ametha. Amenu eta ametha. Amenu eta ametha. Estehe anta. One more time. O ace a, amen eta usi. O ace a, amen eta usi. An ese, amen eta an orisan. An ese, amen eta an nesan. An ese, amen eta an ese, amen eta an ese, amen eta an nesan. Lua mai, lue luetai, lua mai, lue luetai, lua metha, hmm. Lueste, luan tai, yai, 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 yai. Amenu eta ametha. Amenu eta ametha. Amenu eta ametha. Este anta.